Right. So virtual training. What exactly is virtual training? Who knows what that is? Virtual training. So your host today is me. I'm David. I'm David Brown. I'm a master trainer and master instructional designer. I've been training for almost 20 years. And I'm also an an analyst. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I'm a consultant to the World Bank. And I'm the managing partner of D. Brown Consulting. So I kind of participated. I did a lot of virtual training. I've started doing virtual training probably like for the last four or five years now. And we have an e-learning platform, Office Training Hub, where we record content, online e-learning training, e-learning content. And you see the difference between that and what is really virtual training. I'm also a chartered accountant and a member of many institutions, CFA and the rest. But I really like teaching. I really like training. And this world of online virtual training is something that I think it's, is here to stay. And there's a lot we can learn from it. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to introduce virtual training using virtual training instead of classroom training as a replacement to classroom training. Secrets of effective virtual training, creating a successful virtual training strategy, tips on hosting a synchronous training or or synchronous and there's something called asynchronous training as well. And then I'll give you some reading recommendations, some books I think you should buy if you're interested in this topic and you want to move forward with this kind of technology. This expands your horizons as an instructor and you'll be able to teach everybody everywhere in the world at the same time. And it's just wonderful. What is virtual training? So what exactly is virtual training? Let me give you a definition of virtual training. So virtual training is basically highly interactive training that is online, instructor-led, and is has defined learning objectives is individually connected. That means each participant is individually connected to this um, platform and it's using a web-based platform. So virtual training is training that is highly interactive, online, instructor-led, where individuals are connecting to this online web-based platform and there are defined learning objectives that are basically going on. So that is virtual training. Anything outside that is really a a kind of subset of virtual training. It's not really virtual training. The most important bit there is highly interactive, which is what a lot of people fail to do. Their trainings are not highly interactive. All right. So why use virtual training instead of classroom training? Why use virtual training? For starters, I mean, virtual virtual training is cheaper, right? I mean, I mean, there are many reasons why we should use virtual training instead of classroom training. But um, yeah, virtual training, I think one of the first one is yeah, cost, but really is also very flexible. So the reasons to use virtual training, flexibility. Virtual training is flexible. So you have a big challenge of getting all participants from all over. Let's assume you're a big company. You have participants all over the country. You need to get them to do this very critical health and safety training. Very critical health and safety training that everybody needs to do. So are you going to bring all of them to Lagos? Let's assume you're in Nigeria. You fly everybody into Lagos or you fly the instructor to the various locations. Such kind of training can be done virtually. And the virtual training doesn't mean it's not interactive. It can be very interactive. You design the course in a way that it works as good as real face-to-face, as good as real classroom training. So that's where virtual training comes, that flexibility, allowing you to, to kind of deploy that training to loads of people at the same time. Another reason why you should use virtual training in place of classroom is it's economical. So that's one of the very first reasons many people go for virtual training. It's cheaper. But the thing about virtual training is, let me tell you what, it's cheaper for the client, maybe the company. Let's assume me, David Brown, I'm supposed to give a financial modeling course virtually. It will be far more expensive for me to give it virtually as an instructor than for the participants. And that is because to be true virtual training, I must make it interactive. So I must change the entire plan of how I want to teach this course. Because for one thing about virtual training is you can't train for eight hours straight. That just won't work. Maximum is probably two hours. Maximum two hours. And there's certain rules about virtual training, the interactivity. You must interact with your audience three to five minutes, every three to five minutes. And we're going to talk about how all the different ways of interacting with the audience. But it's 
economical for the clients or for the company, not necessarily for the trainer or the instructor. It's far more expensive for the instructor. But again, at the end of the day, when you add all the costs, it's kind of cheaper for everybody. So that's virtual training. Right. Let me just close some notifications. So it's economical. Yes, we agree. Very economical. So what is another reason to use virtual training in place of classroom? So our fourth or our third reason is easy evaluation. So it's very, very easy to deploy evaluations when you use virtual training. So um, typically, the classic evaluation is your uh, quizzes or you basically you do an um, uh, evaluation at the end of the training that says, how well did you understand X, Y, Z? But in a virtual training environment, you can quiz instantly. I can send you, I just did a poll right now for you, right? And you answered the poll and I could see everybody's answers. That's so much easier to do in a virtual training environment than in a classroom training. You can imagine there are 100 people in a classroom training and you want to poll them, give them a quiz or give them a poll and everybody's writing. It takes like probably 20 minutes. Here it took me, what, 10 seconds to poll you guys. So yeah, easy to evaluate and see whether or not uh, people are getting stuff. Yeah. So that's the benefits, I think, from virtual training versus classroom training. Let's now go into secrets of effective virtual training. What are the secrets of effective virtual training? Right. And the secrets, before I jump into the secrets, I'll give you one. Uh, secrets of effective virtual training is you need to know, to be very good, they're going to give you nine secrets, but you need to know your subject matter. You need to be very good, understand your subject matter in detail. You need to be a subject matter expert and uh, know, your, know your stuff. Uh, that's, that's a given, right? You must know your stuff. What, el what else do we have? What other secrets do we have for virtual training? But Typically, people that go into virtual training should have been the ones that are already doing classroom training pretty well. That's, that's what I think, anyway. They're pretty good at facilitating the classroom course for their own expertise. And then they can easily move to virtual or it's easier to move to virtual training. But it's a different ballgame. So that is it. You need to know your subject matter. That's number one. Then the next thing, another secret of very effective virtual training is focus on your audience. So you need to focus on your audience. That's the next secret about effective virtual training. Focus on your audience. Your audience are, I mean, you need to have or how interact with your audience every four minutes. Just take it that every four minutes you need to interact with your audience. Now, what I'm doing right now is a webinar. This webinar is a form of virtual training, but is not a true virtual training because interaction is limited. I can't interact with you as much as I should in a virtual training. As I said, virtual training is every four minutes. So this is more, you're listening to me. I'm not interacting as much with you. I could tell you to do a quiz and stuff, but let me show you one form of interacting or focusing on my audience and helping that interact, iterative or interactive process with my audience, right? I could ask you to watch a video. And right now, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to watch a video about virtual training and letting you understand certain tools, right? Basic virtual training tools. So I'm going to give you um, tools for virtual training and you're going to watch basic virtual training tools. A very short video. And this is me focusing on my audience, trying to interact with my audience uh, using a webinar platform, right? But watch this video on tools for virtual training. Okay, it seems that the tools didn't work. I think that's another thing about virtual training. You have snags and you need to have backup. But that's one of the secrets. I'm even coming to that secret soon. So let's just jump on. Focus on your audience was our second secret of effective virtual training. Our third secret of effective virtual training is to keep it simple. Keep things as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate. Look at this slide you're looking at for right, right now. It just has very few text. I mean, you have your numbers one to, to nine at the top, and you've kept it simple. So the slides themselves are simple, and you should put in as much interaction as possible with your audience, but don't overclutter. Keep things simple, right? Take out all the industry speak, all the jargon and stuff in your talk. Make your talk clear, simple word choices. Learn how to adjust jargon so that anyone uh, taking the course can understand it quickly and easily. Yeah. 
Too much information is too bad. Cognitive overload. Keep it simple. Right. What's another secret? So secret number four, coming up now, develop a theme. You need to develop a theme. So you need to like pretend that you're a movie director when you're doing a virtual training and draw out your scenes. So just like any movie, if you look at a movie, you will see that there's no scene that's more than like five minutes. If you watch a movie critically, you'll see that there are scenes, tiny, 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 tiny scenes that all come together to to kind of produce that movie so when you're a virtual trainer you two should have scenes and i think your scenes should be every three minutes three minute scenes so you need to kind of like document or do a production every virtual training is a production and you have all these themes that on scenes that you're trying to um push push through to kind of push through the concept or the whatever it is you're trying to pass across so it's it's you put in interactivity obviously into your scenes. So if you say every three or four minutes, that means every four minutes you do something, four minutes you're doing something else, and hopefully every four minutes you're also adding interactivity. So you need to develop a theme and the general theme and scenes for scripting your entire virtual training. What next? So another uh, secret of virtual training is you need to add personality. So number five, we are going to talk about adding personality trust me so add personality is your number fifth number five secret to effective virtual training so humor is good jokes and stuff put in some interesting things even games there are ways you can put use a whiteboard and stuff to play games or show games in your virtual training so there there there's a lot of interactivity that you can use in your virtual training to bring your virtual training to life and then Add your own personality to it. Let people, because people can't see you. There's no body language and stuff. You need to find ways of adding that personality to your training. And that will really enhance your virtual training or the virtual training experience of your participants, right? Another of the secrets is to plan the structure of your training. So you have to do a detailed planning. How do you plan the structure of your training? Proper visual aids. I use effective uh, effective visual is number seven on the list. So number six was plan the structure of your training. So you have to list the topics which need to be detailed instructional design. You need to do your objectives, have your objectives listed, separate those topics and plan what you want to cover in each course. Yeah. So this gives the learner a feel of the course and provides logical breaking points in the training. And as I said, those breaking points, you just take them as your various scenes so you should have probably three minute scenes planned out throughout the two hours or so that you're going to do the virtual training so that was number six and number seven as you can see is select the proper visual aids pick the right graphics the right bullet points the right videos to keep your users engaged without visual without any visual overload really don't do too much cognitive overload but select your proper visual aids to make sure it's engaging. So that's number seven of the secrets. Number eight, what do we have as number eight? The next thing in number eight, I'll ask you guys to do that now, is you need to ask questions. So ask questions. So first thing I want you guys to do is ask me questions. So always ask questions. Let people ask questions. And then, of course, you provide answer answers. So that's one of the easiest ways to engage. Say, oh, hi, hi, Jack. Oh, can you answer this? I mean, what, what do you plan to do with X? What do you plan to do with Y? So I ask questions. So you, you as a virtual training facilitator, you need to guide the discussion. So you already have questions prepared or you already have sessions prepared that will encourage people to ask questions. And that's number eight. So what's the last secret to effective virtual training? Is to encourage group collaboration. Now you wonder, this is an online training. How can we encourage group collaboration? Now, most modern virtual training tools have this ability for you to encourage group collaboration. It's amazing what you have out there. Really amazing. So I'll, I'll attempt to show you a video on one of those tools. 
How do you avoid information overload? Details are necessary too. So Ayobami, you're right. Details are necessary, but really sometimes the details, just like they have in a, an appendix inside your, your, your manual, you have an appendix. You could have an, uh, some attachments on your virtual training platform. People can download for the details, but don't go too much into detail in your virtual training. Those can be, you could do a breakout session where people can kind of talk in more detail in the breakout sessions. And in fact, I'm going to show you a video. One of the ways to encourage collaborations in the virtual training is to have breakout sessions. So let's see how one of the platforms in virtual training called GoToWebinar. Let's see how they manage breakout sessions. So this is a platform called GoToWebinar. Let's just see how they manage breakout sessions. Hopefully. Welcome to a video on GoToTraining's Breakouts, a feature with GoToTraining's activities. When you are setting up activities, you will have Welcome to a video on GoToTraining's Breakouts, a feature with GoToTraining's activities. When you are setting up activities, you will have the option of keeping all of your attendees together or you can split them into smaller groups or breakouts. You can break your attendees up into a maximum of six smaller groups. Some of the latest updates to Breakout include a faster and more reliable telephone and VoIP experience, as well as a better overall experience in session. Regardless of how you've connected in, VoIP or phone, the audio will automatically transfer to the Breakout session. Once in a GoToTraining session with attendees, a trainer can launch a breakout activity by simply clicking this button in their control panel. For this example, we will use two breakouts. As you can see, the trainer has the option to use audio only, which would allow the respective groups to simply discuss a topic. The trainer can choose here to allow attendees to share their screens in a breakout, Trainers can click here to have attendees watch a video or view an image or PDF in their breakout. And trainers can choose here to have attendees edit a document together in breakout. If you would like attendees to edit a document together, you must have a Google Drive account and you must sync your Google Drive to your GoToTraining account prior to your breakout session. By following the steps to sync your Google Drive account with your GoToTraining account, a folder is automatically created within your Google Plus Drive. This is where you want to put any materials you wish to share with your attendees during a breakout session. These materials will then be available to the trainer from the control panel during a training. Click here to edit a doc and then select Start to begin the breakout. From the attendee's perspective, seen here, they will be able to collaborate with other attendees in the breakout room to edit a document. From the trainer's view, seen here, they are able to join a breakout and view what those attendees are working on. Trainers can send messages to attendees and end any particular breakout when they are done. All breakout documents are saved in the Google Plus Drive. Similarly, before starting a breakout, trainers can choose to have breakout attendees view a video from YouTube or Vimeo. Please note that when sharing a video, the audio will always play out of the computer or device's speakers. It does not play through the phone if that's how someone has joined. Or view images by clicking here before clicking start for a breakout. Again, all edited documents will be saved for later use as needed. When a trainer selects share their screens before starting a breakout, attendees in the breakout rooms will be able to share their own screens with each other for collaboration. This is different from when a trainer chooses to share something with the entire audience. Finally, trainers can choose to have breakout attendees use audio only. Once this is selected and breakout is started, attendees will simply join individual breakout conference rooms. Here they can verbally work on a project in a smaller group setting. Thank you for watching this overview of GoToTraining's updated breakout feature. Best of luck in all your GoToTraining events. Well, let's talk about creating a successful virtual training strategy. So, well, the very first thing is you need to have a detailed outline. So again, planning is key. If you don't plan, then you plan to fail, right? If you, you really need to plan at all times. So you have to have a detailed outline and research 
of your core content before you start this virtual training journey or before you do anything virtual training. You need to understand the tools available to you, how you use those tools for interaction effectively. You don't just use a tool because, oh, you like the tool. You use it because it's effective to effectively pass the message across to the audience that you want to train, right? So one of the most important aspects of a successful virtual training is strategy, right? How do you, what's the strategy? And what organization are you actually training? Where, where, which organization or which participants, where are they coming from? Knowing your audience. So by creating an outline, you can stay on topic and more effectively structure your overall virtual training delivery. Very key. Take it that you're a movie producer. You're producing a movie and a virtual training. And you must make sure that every scene goes according to plan. So that's number one. So that's uh, one of the uh, creating a successful virtual training strategy is to have a detailed outline. What about the second strategy or how to create a successful virtual training strategy? The key is same thing we said before. Consider your audience. Always, always, always consider your audience. So when creating your virtual training strategy, you should always have a firm grip on who your audience is and what they hope to achieve through their training with you. So again, the learning objectives are very key. Knowing those learning objectives, agreeing those learning objectives, and that's what will help you to select key pieces of information that should be included in your e-learning course plan. This is very key. Get your learning objectives. Let them be Bloom's. Use Bloom's taxonomy when you're developing your learning objectives. This will also help you develop a virtual training strategy that caters to the varied learning needs of your audience. So, For example, if your audience needs to learn basic skills, uh, job-based skills during the virtual training uh, event, then you can incorporate exercises, discussion topics, and real-world examples related to what exactly it is they'll be doing or the skills that you want them to acquire. So considering your audience is very, very key. So that's a number two um, tip for you in creating a successful virtual training strategy. The next one, the next tip, is you need to use user-friendly content. So user-friendly content delivery is another key tip. User-friendly content de delivery. For virtual training, uh, for, for your virtual training should be easy for people to access, right? They should be easy for them to access, even for participants who aren't tech savvy. So it's not techie techie. You, you don't need to, uh, you're going for a virtual training. You don't need all that tech. It should be very easy to access. So, and again, this comes to the platform that you're using. Try and use platforms that are very simple and very intuitive for people to use. Platforms that work on your iPad, platforms that work on your phone. It's very important that your platform now should work on your phone or iPad because most people use their phone to go online for certain things. And their phone is far more convenient. So if there's an app, excellent. Let them use the app. So one of the platforms we use is called Zoom. I'll show you one or two of those platforms soon. Zoom, and it's excellent when it comes to using your phone with Zoom. Very, all the interactive features work very well. So that's another user-friendly content delivery is uh, when you're creating a successful virtual training strategy to really help to have a user-friendly content delivery. What other tips do we have for you in that strategy formulation? Is you need to offer periodic recaps. So you need to recap. So you need to constantly recap what it is you're doing so that people can be up to speed in what it is you're doing. So offer periodic recaps of what it, whatever it is you're covering. This will help employees to better acquire the information, absorb it, and recall it when needed. Also, you may want to consider offering periodic recaps throughout the virtual training course itself. So for example, we, we, I did a virtual training course on finance for non-finance managers. The actual classroom course was a two-day course, so probably, let's say, seven hours a day times two, 14 hours. So that course, we split it into two hours, two, 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 two hours for two months. So we had um, eight weeks of two hours. 
eight weeks of two hours is what we used to con we converted the um, classroom training to a virtual course and it lasted eight weeks and in between those eight weeks of course they were doing exercises and i think they learned finance for non-finance far better than they would have in a classroom setting because they had more time to practice and then they come back to virtual do another two-hour virtual so offer periodic recaps is key even in the sense of a very large course then lastly, you need group collaboration via social media. Whilst you're doing virtual training, try and use all those other social media tools as well. In, in between the trainings, you should use those social media tools, Twitter, Facebook. Like right now, I can ask you, everybody here, to go and tweet. If you can go and tweet on my handle, for example, let me put my handle there and let's see. I'll show the Twitter. I'll just do at. So this is my handle. If you're on Twitter, I'm on analyst. While we're learning, I want to say, okay, what was one main learning? What's one key point you got out of this? Can you guys tweet about it? That's my handle, at the Brown Analyst. So tweet about what main points you learned. And let's see it on Twitter. And of course, you're going to at me. So let's see if you can do that on Twitter. I'm looking at my Twitter right now. And let's see if we can interact that way. You could even have a hashtag. You could have a hashtag that you could use in your training. So you're using this collaborative with social media tools, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. All those are excellent tools for collaboration, even during your virtual training class. So you could just tell them, pause everybody. Can we go to the uh, Twitter handle and type what you've just learned? And then now show the Twitter, whatever they've said on the Twitter handle on the screen. That's interaction, right? easily brought in interaction into your training. So tips on hosting a synchronous training. These are going to be similar to the tips I've already mentioned before. And key ones, as I said, is provide pre-training materials. Pre-training materials when you're doing a synchronous is you tell people to do certain things before they come to class. You need them to provide pre-training materials. So they need to encourage, you need to encourage the participants to complete all pre-training materials before the classroom to enable class participation in class ac ac activities and give them a background and kind of encourage them or give them reasons to want to really jump into the classroom. We do this a lot. This is actually called blended learning. And we do this a lot in our own courses. So if you go to Office Training Hub, for example, you'd see that we have our, our classroom courses who have their pre-work on officetraininghub.com. I'm going to check it out. I'll just put that on the chat so you can see that. And yeah, I could give you even a, give you something. I'll give you an offer, a course that could help you plan for your retirement. So build your own retirement plan with this course. So I've put that offer for you guys. It's a build your retirement plan. Learn how to plan your retirement in Excel. Now, this is that course is a face-to-face. -face, it's like a virtual virtual training, but really not. It's not interactive. It's online, but we have some interactive tools where you can chat with the trainer. So it's semi semi interactive, not fully. So I wouldn't consider that virtual training is self paced online training. So provide pre training materials is very key when you're doing virtual training. Another key tip is you carry out your tech check. Make sure your technology is working and make sure you have a backup on top of a backup on top of a backup. So make sure your producer has, um, has everything he needs and you have to realize that it needs two people to do a good virtual training. You can't do a good virtual training with just one person. One person will be the instructor. The second person is their producer and your producer will be at the background. It's just at the background producing helping you with all those technical difficulties if you something happens with your connection he can or she can back up and stuff like that so carry out tech check very key very key right what else do you need to know what other tip what final tip do i have for you final tip is once you carry out your tech check you also need to be a little bit technology savvy you know, technology savvy, yes, and you need to be able to manage your technology. So managing your technology, for I have two monitors right now with with my phone, my phone and an I uh, well, I don't have an iPad, but I should have an iPad. So if you look at a virtual trainer, 
you would see many screens. One screen is doing something, another screen is doing something, another screen is seeing, showing me what my participants are looking at. Another screen is a backup screen in case this screen goes down, I can just quickly back up. You have your internet access, you have your backup internet access, you have your mic and you have your backup mic, you have backups on backups on backups. So that's how you do virtual training. You, it just looks like a cockpit. As a cockpit of various screens, right? So managing your technology is a very key thing. You must have backups. Now, let me give you some books that you could. Uh, I'm going to recommend some books. So just before that, I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to play you guys another video, and that video is going to talk about virtual training or basic virtual training tools. So let me play that video. Virtual training design doesn't need to be difficult, especially when you take advantage of the tools and features available in virtual classrooms like Cisco WebEx and Adobe Connect. One thing that you really need to consider, though, is that because the virtual classroom is not the same as the traditional classroom, you have to adapt engagement techniques in order to create meaningful, learner-centered programs. Without consistent engagement, virtual classroom participants will get bored. This is where virtual classroom tools come into play. Including them in your instructional design battles learner boredom and disengagement. You can engage as frequently as needed, ideally every three to five minutes. By using the virtual classroom toolkit effectively and appropriately to encourage engagement, you can achieve the ultimate goal in e-learning, training that sticks. Fundamentally, there are six tools included in the virtual classroom that you should think about. They are chat, whiteboard, breakout rooms, application sharing, synchronized web browsing, and surveys, polls, and feedback tools. The first tool we will talk about is chat. Chat is a versatile text-based tool that allows participants and facilitators to communicate with one another using text messages. Next up is Whiteboard. Whiteboard is a virtual tool that is used the same way one uses a flip chart or marker board in a traditional classroom. It allows facilitators to record participant comments, emphasize important points, and to write exercise instructions. Now, Breakout Rooms. Breakout Rooms are a virtual classroom tool that allows groups of two or more participants to meet and collaborate during a larger live online session. Next, application sharing. This allows the facilitator to share software applications like spreadsheets, word processing, and custom apps with participants, even if they don't have the software installed on their individual machines. Let's discuss synchronized web browsing. This tool allows the facilitator or participants to bring the class to an internet site or corporate intranet. This option is available on many virtual classroom platforms. Finally, there are surveys, polls, and feedback tools. These tools help facilitators create engagement and determine whether participants understand the material. With so many different tools, there are lots of ways to engage. By leveraging them, your instructional designs will create virtual learning environments that are as impactful as the traditional classroom setting. The InSync Training White Paper, Virtual Classroom Tool Design Basics, a virtual engagement primer, provides additional information on this topic. Access it for free at www.insyncTraining.com. Additionally, our Virtual Classroom Instructional Designer Certificate course provides in-depth application design instruction. For more information, visit www.insyncTraining.com and select the Certificates drop-down on the top left-hand side of the home page. The the links for both the white paper and course are included in the video description below. Right, so that was a nice video on those tools you could use, so six core tools that you could use. So any time you guys want to move or change to a new plat platform, virtual training platform, just remember that um, you, you need to make sure that it has in, to the minimum those six tools are available to you. Right. So here's some recommended books for you. Three excellent books I think you should go by to start your journey as a virtual trainer. Cindy Huggett and Jennifer Hoffman. I've seen these uh, wonderful people at the ATD conference, that's the Association for Talent Development conference in the US. Every year there's an international conference. It's around May. I advise you go to the next one. You will learn so much. So Cindy has just been an inspiration when it comes to virtual training. And I learned a lot of what I, I know about virtual training from her. 
both live as well as with her books. So she has quite a number of books. I would recommend the Virtual Training Guidebook and the first one of the earlier books she wrote, which is the Virtual Training Tools and Templates. I also recommend Jennifer Hoffman, who has been doing virtual training for more than 20 years, and she's written the Synchronous Trainer Survival Guide. So facilitating successful live and online courses, meetings, and events. So that's Jennifer Hoffman. And she's in, in sync. In sync is her company. And that's what the video you just watched was from her company. So I recommend these three books. And of course, go online to their websites and check them out. So you go to Cindy's website, uh, Cindy, and then other, other websites as well. Now, there's a future. I'm going to leave you with one last thought. One last thought about virtual training. There is virtual reality that's coming now. Virtual reality training is also virtual training, but this is something else. Virtual reality kind of puts the virtual right into your head. You put on virtual reality gear and it's almost like if you play video games, you're in a video game all on your own learning. So um, my last uh, short video I'm going to play for you guys is an introduction really to virtual reality. So virtual reality training. It's just a one minute video or so, one, one and a half minutes. Watch it to see what's coming up when you when you talk when you talk about virtual. Virtual reality training. Just have Diagnostic says there's a loose connection at the top of the tower. If you go get your gear ready, I'll go call it in to make sure that we're all clear. Great. So that's virtual reality. And it's amazing. And it's getting cheaper and cheaper. It's very expensive now to probably create a course with virtual reality. But the guys at eLearning Studios, if you go to eLearningStudios.com, that's e-learningstudios.com, you see all sorts of wonderful stuff that those guys are doing. And there are quite a lot of other companies as well. But that video was from eLearning Studios. So the future of e-learning, the future of virtual learning, the future of virtual reality, it's, it's just amazing what you can do with all these tools. And I advise all facilitators, yes, classroom is good. Classroom is not dead. I mean, there's some things that really you need physical presence to be able to do that, maybe changing behavior especially. But virtual, virtual reality, I can assure you, changes behavior pretty fast when you do it properly. So here are the recommended books, and I will advise that you keep on researching and keep on checking things out. Virtual training is the way to go when you want to make things cheaper and better. But as I said, for instructors, it's a bit difficult. You need to have learn a whole new set of new skills because you need to engage every four minutes and everything. So if you want to be a good virtual trainer, I advise you read some of these books and also, try and get into the habit of learning a little bit more technology. Social media is also extremely good. You can use social media in that interaction that you have on virtual. So we are Deep Brown Consulting, and this is um, our details of 700 Training. You can go to our online platform on Office Training Hub. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar on virtual training secrets, and we look forward to seeing you again next month. Every third Thursday of the month, we do webinars on talent development. We do webinars on Excel and Power BI. We do webinars on financial modeling. 
every third Thursday. So we're going to see you next month for the third Thursday of the month. I know this is not the third Thursday, but uh, this month we had to delay our webinar a bit. But next month is going to be the third Thursday of the month. Go to dbrownconsulting.net, click on webinar, and then you can register for all our webinars. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next month.